Well then, I've been giving this, um, when I'm describing the movie to people, I've been giving it the quite facetious summary, uh, My 40-Year-Old Virgin's Left Foot and the Butterfly. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Do you think that sums... I mean, it's... Uh, the thing about that's not really doing the movie justice because it's just so... It's such a beautiful kind of moving film in lots of different yeah. ways. But I'm just... I'm wondering, it, it must have been quite intimidating at the start of this to try and... Not just to figure out how to kind of physically... You know, tell the story, but also capturing the, getting the tone right and just capturing the spirit of Mark's life and character. So, could you tell me a little bit how you, about you manage that? Well, that tends to be a, a process rather than just a decision. Um, uh, in the, w w I forget what the what, what the combination of descriptions you was <laughs> you you gave was, but I'd throw in risky business as well. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, risky business meets the Hunchback of Notre Dame or something like that. But but a lot of that sort of stuff went through my mind. What tone was I looking for? Um, uh, I don't think I wanted to do my left foot again. I certainly wanted to stay away from. Um, the other recent movies of that genre, The Sea Inside mm -hmm. and The Diving Bell and The Butterfly, which I think were way too impressionistic for me. Mm -hmm. they, they really were um, uh, less to do with a, a narrative than a, uh, a style. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I, I, I think that the message that kept kind of um, uh, knocking at the inside of my head was keep it simple. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, less is more. Don't try and gild the lily. This is about um, a guy learning about sex from a woman who who knows about it and that um, there's something fascinating in just being taught the mechanics of something we're all assumed to know everything about. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that um, uh, it was, one, just a matter of keeping it simple and and also finding a tone for it which was not trying to be funny but a reflection of his inner voice mm -hmm. and the way he thought and spoke. Mm -hmm. uh, you um, survived polio yourself as yeah. a younger man, did you? Yeah. So, I mean, there must be a personal connection to it maybe a little bit as yeah, well. Yeah, it was a personal connection that worried me initially. And, and when I first read his story, I thought, has that impacted on me so powerfully because of that personal connection. Mm -hmm. And I think I had to get away from that and be reassured that it didn't just connect to people with polio, that it was really a universal story and, and uh, reflected everyone's fear of sex and everyone's early fumblings and mm -hmm. anxieties. Mm -hmm. um, so whilst that personal connection might have been an attraction at the start, I tried to get away from it. Mm -hmm. And certainly no one in the cast ever asked me anything like that. Really? Yeah. What, you know, to tell me, tell them about my experiences and what it was. So that became a totally invisible element mm -hmm. during the making of the film. Mission accomplished. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, the timing of this movie is quite interesting. Um, it comes on the back of another recent French movie called Rust and Bone, where Marion Cotillard plays a character who's disabled. It's all about her kind of discovering her sexuality as a disabled person as well. And it wow. also comes, yeah, and it also comes in the same year as the London 2012 Paralympics. And there's this big discussion about how people are kind of just thinking about disabled people a little differently now. And do you think your movie kind of fits into that kind of pattern of just making people change their perspective a little bit. Well, I'd hoped it didn't fit into any pattern. That was the big attraction to me, that I thought, wow, disability has been a, a recurring theme in film and in literature, uh, going back to The Hunchback of Notre Dame and, you know, Game of Thrones and, you know, lots of disabled heroes and heroines. However, I thought that the novelty here was not just the desire for connection and for sex but that in a way it was an instructional movie it was okay um how to do it <laughs> step one etc uh, and that in that sense i'm hoping i wasn't um following in a pattern i think that um, we probably see patterns wherever we want to see them but the truth is that disability has been a recurring subject in cinema for as long as i can remember or anyone can remember um, 
and sometimes a very good subject, sometimes dealt with very mawkishly. Mm -hmm. um, was John Hawkes always the first choice or the only choice, or what way did you kind of find him in terms of casting? Uh, I have to give credit to our casting director, Ronnie Yeskel. I think the casting directors are amongst the unsung heroes and heroines of the business. Without her, I wouldn't have known who he was, really, and um, it was her conviction that this is your man that made, him t made me take him very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that, uh, I, I mean, we overcame the issue of how good an actor he was pretty quickly. He's a formidable actor. And then there was the fact that I liked him. And that I saw aspects of Martha Bryant. And then there was the fact that he was very slight of build. And we realised that we could do this without any body doubles or computer generated stuff and and that uh, that was a tremendous relief and that he was also willing to do stuff to his body to um, create the Mark O'Brien image. Mm -hmm. Finally um, uh, I think William H. Macy in this movie probably <laughs> does more to redeem the Catholic Church than anything that we've seen in years. <laughs> yes yes I th think he's d due for a papal knighthood don't you? <laughs> He does something quite interesting with that with that role, doesn't he? Yes, I, mean, I never anticipated it, but he mm. really he really ate it up as a, as if as he's wa wanting to be that guy all his life. Yeah, he seems born to play it. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's great fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, it's a pleasure. De Declan, Declan, wasn't it? yes. Yeah.